Okay. And then I'll give one question here that was asked by Casey. And Casey asked, at what stage should you start the process of putting yourself on the transplant list for dialysis? So excellent question, Casey. In general, I have this rule that I came up with, gosh, now almost 15 years ago, and I call it the 15-20-25 rule. And the rule is very simple. Essentially, when your kidney function drops below 25 on the GFR, you want to start having discussions about transplant. You want to start having discussions about dialysis. You want to learn everything you can. You want to understand your options, make the decision on what type of treatment you would want to get. When your kidney function, if it continues to drop and drops below 20%, Below 20 is when you are eligible to get on the transplant list. You want to be able to get on the transplant list. Remember, just because you drop once below the 20, uh, 20 number doesn't mean that they would put you on it. You have to drop below it two times in a row for them to consider it because all sorts of factors can affect one lab value. That's why they look for two lab values. And so that's the 20 mark. Less than 15 is where we call dialysis territory. Now, in terms of what is the number to start, basically less than 15 essentially depends on the doctor-patient relationship. It will depend on symptoms. It will depend on quality of life. It will depend on how much swelling there is or shortness of breath, etc. So all sorts of things, including electrolytes, blood pressure, and those things will determine. For example, we have some patients that get down to 17, 18, but because they have so much uncontrollable fluid, that we end up starting dialysis early simply because we are unable to control their fluid otherwise. In other cases, they're doing so well that even though their GFRs are down to nine or eight, we have been able to use a very low protein, high fiber foods, a combination of both to create lots of short chain fatty acids in their diet, to reduce the formation of what we call uremic toxins. And as a result of it, we've been able to keep them functioning well and not have to start dialysis. So it is patient dependent. And I never tell my patient that there's a specific number, but it's 25, 20, 15 as a good way to understand it. Perfect. And Dr. Hashmi, to add to that, because this is something that I hear a lot is people who are very stable and doing a lot with their diet and lifestyle, maybe in that, you know, eight to 12% kidney function range. Um, I feel like sometimes they're scared because their doctor's wanting to send them to get a fistula placement or go to education for peritoneal dialysis. So is there any like risk or benefit? Can you talk about that for getting a fistula placement? If you might not start dialysis for months to a year, depending on what you're doing with your diet and lifestyle. So, you know, when we go below 20, we actually put the fistulas in, we actually go ahead and put the PD catheters in. And a lot of patients ask me this question and they say, but why? Why do you want to go ahead and do that if I'm not going to be starting? Look, you know, I'll do everything you ask me, doc. I'll, you know, climb Mount Everest two times backwards if you ask me. Here's why. You have essentially four big lifelines. And the fifth one is your belly. But you have your arms, right and left, and you have your legs, right and left. Those are your four mm -hmm. lifelines. And then you have your belly for peritoneal dialysis. If you run out of those five lifelines, game over. We do not have any other options left. So the reason we talk about using fistulas and putting them in is because they take a while to mature. So if you end up needing dialysis and your fistula is not ready yet, we end up having to put in catheters. And when we put in catheters, they can scar up the vessels. And when they scar up the vessels, not only will it cause that vessel to close up, it can actually make it so that you can't use that entire side anymore for future vascular axis. So if I go ahead and take away your entire axis, remember, five lifelines, right? Four critical lifelines for hemo, one critical lifeline for PD. If I take away your lifeline, that is a very, very big 
deal. And that's why when you hear nephrologists saying things like, we want to start early, it's not because we're trying to be mean or anything. Mm -hmm. It's because we want to make sure that you'll be ready. With peritoneal dialysis, one of the things that we do very successfully is we do what's called a buried PD catheter. So we put it in and we put it right under the skin. You cannot see it on top of the skin. Nobody even knows it's there. And when we're ready, it's a simple procedure. It's done as an outpatient setting in the office, local anesthetic, and they can take the catheter out. It's ready to go. Very safe procedure. We're very successful at it. And you're able to do it very, very easily. So in other words, please, if you have the option and your nephrologist is telling you about it, don't ignore that because it truly does make a difference. And it is truly one of those things where it is a life-changing procedure. 